تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالكم وأنفسكم ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون Allah says, this is the three-step formula, تؤمنون بالله that you believe in Allah. Almost all Muslims have this. Even though our aqeedah may be wish-washy here and there, we all say, أَمَّنَ بِاللَّهِ We believe in Allah. أَمَّنْتُ بِاللَّهِ I believe in Allah. وَرَسُولِهِ And His Messenger. These are the two key components to even entering Islam. If you do not have these, you can't be a Muslim. So we have these. أَمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ we believe in Allah and His Messenger. These two we have. What we are missing is the third active ingredient to the formula. And the reason I say active ingredient is it is the key ingredient that makes the formula work. If you go and buy any medication in any pharmacy, you will look on the back on the box and you will see that it has inactive ingredients and active ingredients. And usually there's one or two or three a couple active ingredients that make the rest of the formula of ingredients work. Without these active ingredients, all you have is a conjuncture of stuff that really can't help you without these active ingredients. Also, if you want to bake a, let's say you want to bake a cake, you put all the ingredients and you forget to put the baking soda, you forget to put the uh, baking powder, the, the baking soda, what makes the cake rise. Put that cake in the oven, what are you going to get? You're going to get a flat, mushy cake that no one's going to want to eat. So if it doesn't have the active ingredient, it's going to be no good. So what is the active ingredient in this formula? وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرَ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ That you make effort, you make juhud, you strive, you struggle, you sacrifice. For the sake of Allah, with what He has given you, be amwalikum in your possessions, what He has given you of possessions, of commodities, of wealth, of sustenance, wa anfusikum, and your greatest commodity, yourself. That is better for you if you did but know. So, this is the formula that you believe in Allah and His Messenger, and you back up that belief with struggling and striving and sacrificing for the sake of Allah with your possessions and with your wealth. This is better for you if you did but know. And this is what Allah is asking us for. Not just Iman. Oh, I believe. I don't do anything else. I've heard this many times. Oh, I believe. I don't pray, but I believe. You don't believe. I pray, or I believe, but I don't fast. They don't believe. Because Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said that Iman, faith, is not just the substance of hopes and wishes. But Iman, true Iman, is that which settles in the heart, the belief which settles in the heart, and then becomes manifest in the actions with the limbs. It's not just mere lip profession to belief. It's backing it up with actions. It's backing it up with deeds because this deen of Islam has become too much a deen of kalam, of talking. And I know this as I am one of the greatest perpetrators of this, this problem. I, I speak way too much. It has become a deen of talking and not a deen of amal, a deen of actions. And when we look at the deen of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we look at the deen of the Sahaba and we look at the deen of the pious Salaf who came after them their deen was a deen of actions their deen was a deen not only of speech but a deen of speech that was backed up with deeds with actions they said and they did Allah commanded and they acted Allah refers to the Sahaba around Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran that they were people who Samitna Wa'atana. They heard Samitna, they heard Wa'atana, and they obeyed. Allah said, 
and they did. Rasul commanded sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they acted. This was their characteristics. This is one end of the of the the, 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 the scheme. This is one end of it. And on the other end, you have Bani Israel, whom Allah refers to in the Quran as Sami'na, they listen, wa asana, and they disobeyed. Allah said, and they did something else. Not out of ignorance, not out of not knowing what was they were told to do, but blatant, arrogant disobedience. Allah told them to do one thing, they would do another. Allah said, they didn't listen. This is the other end of the spectrum. You have Sami'na, wa atana, wa sami'na, wa asana. People who listen and obeyed, and people who listen and disobeyed. The fortunate and unfortunate thing of the Muslims of this generation, the Muslims of this ummah, is that we are in the middle. We are neither here nor there. We are not sami'na wa atana. We don't listen and obey, nor do most of us listen and blatantly disobey. We are, and I like to describe us as sami'na, we listen, wa khalas. And that's it. Sami'na wa khalas. We hear, and that's it. Allah says, and we do nothing. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa commands, and we don't act. We go to a good khutbah, and we go outside the, the masjid, we say, MashaAllah, it was a good khutbah. If I ask you tomorrow, brother, what was the khutbah about yesterday? I say, Wallahi brother, I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> SubhanAllah, this is our condition. We are guilty of inaction. We are guilty of not doing anything, but listening. And this is a big problem. Because Allah says that the formula is not only تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ It is وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِعَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَرَالَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ That you believe in Allah and His Messenger and you back it up with struggling, with striving, with acting for the sake of Allah with what He has given you of your possessions and with yourselves. This is better for you if you did not know that we do some action, brothers and sisters. Now is the time for us to put actions behind our words. Now is the time for us to stop speaking so much about what we should be doing and just start doing it. It's not as easy as it sounds, I know. It's easier said than done. I never said that just doing is not going to come with sacrifice because when you look at the word وَتُجَاهِدُونَ it, impl it implies that there will be some sacrifices, there may be struggles, people may be harmed in the process, things may get difficult, may get more difficult before they get easy. But the point is that Allah says this is the formula that will prevent us a painful punishment. And if that was it, if that was it, that's all that Allah wanted to give us, was avoiding a painful punishment, wallahi we couldn't ask for more. But, fortunately Allah is Al-Ghani. He is the one who is rich without need. He is as-samad. He is self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything. Everything is at his disposal. All he has to say is kun. Be. Fayakun. And it is. So for Allah, it's not enough. Just to avoid it's a painful punishment. If you do these small three things, not only is Allah going to avoid us a painful punishment, wallahi, what, what else Allah is promising us, is more than we ever could ask for, is more than we even deserve. Because what does the next ayat say? That Allah will give us for these three things. Allah says that I will forgive you your sins, all of them, jannah, and I'll enter you into Jannah forever. Because Jannah is not a part-time deal. Once you go into Jannah, you're in Jannah. And this is where we come to the price of paradise. 